This is lesson 8.2, permutations of different objects. In this lesson, the focus is on creating and applying strategies to determine the number of ways to arrange a set of different objects. So let's talk about this word permutation. It says a permutation is an arrangement of a set of objects. All right, so definitely a new word for us. In a permutation, order matters, like in the code for your uh, debit card. All right, so uh, what we have right here is we have an example kind of to get us started. It says to determine the number of seven letter permutations of Kelowna, use the fundamental counting principle. Okay, so if we think of the word Kelowna, um, we would have there's seven letters in it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven different possibilities for the first um, letter. And then we have six, and then five, and then four, and then three, and then two, and then one. The reason it would go like that is because we must use a letter right here, so now we have only six to choose from, and then so on, right, when we're only left with one possibility at the end. Now if you were to multiply all these together, that would be the number of permutations, of number of seven letter words we could use with those letters. And so we could say that that is equal to 5,040. That's just if we multiply those together. Now, another uh, perhaps easier way, rather than writing 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 and so on, is we can express this as 7 factorial. And so 7 factorial is equal to 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which we know is equal to 5040. Okay, so this factorial is going to be something that you're going to be using through this unit uh, a lot. So let's talk in general about um, these factorials. So, uh, for instance, if I asked you what one factorial is, one factorial just means one, right? Two factorial, if you probably see the pattern that we have here, is one times two, which is just equal to two, all right? Three factorial is one times two times three, which is equal to six, and so on. Four factorial is equal to one times two times three times four, which is equal to 24. Okay, so we're just adding a different number, uh, sorry, adding another number each time, right? And so this is the, uh, the rule that we have here um, of factorial, like so. All right, let's go on to the next page. So in this question, it says, um, a puzzle designer decides to scrabble the words in the word education to create a jumble puzzle. How many nine-letter uh, permutations of education can be created? So this is really super straightforward. Uh, we are just looking, just like in the clone example, we're looking for really nine factorial. And so in your calculator, a lot of your calculators have a factorial button, so you can just hit nine factorial and you're literally done with this question. Although some of you may have to do the chore and go nine times eight times seven and so on, uh, just like I'm doing right here in order for you to get your solution, okay? And when you end up doing that, you end up getting 362,880 um, as the number of uh, nine letter permutations you can make with uh, the letters education, okay? Now, it goes on to say right here, only some of the objects from a set may be arranged. This means that the number of permutations of a set of objects chosen from a larger set can be determined. So here's what I mean by this. Um, maybe I'll give you a little bit of scenario. I'll, I'll get you maybe just to write this down. Uh, imagine you had, I don't know, let's go with nine songs on your whatever device you guys are using these days. Let's call it an iPod. Um, but you had only time to listen I don't know, maybe you're on the way to um, a hockey game or something like that, you're trying to get pumped up. You only have time to listen to three of them uh, on the way to the game. Okay, so if we take a look at this then, let's talk about the number of arrangements of three songs. So I'm going to write the number of arrangements as the following. So if we have nine songs to choose from, but we're only going to pick three of them, you can imagine that we would have nine possibilities for that first song. And then we'd have eight possibilities for the next song. And then we'd have seven possibilities for a song after that. But then we're stopping right there, right? Because we're not picking all nine, because we're only listening to three. So we would say that we have 504 different permutations um, of, uh, of those three songs, all right? Now, what we can also do is we can express this in terms of factorial notation, okay? So I'm going to write this uh, in terms of factorial notation. So what I could have done is I could have taken 9 factorial, so 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, 
Okay, so those are um, all the different possibilities of songs. What I could have done is I could have picked the possibilities that I wasn't going to include. So I wasn't going to include um, anything more than the first three songs. So I had nine times eight times seven. So since I did not want to include these songs right here, I could have gotten rid of those. Okay, and what this brings us to see is that I could have expressed this as nine factorial all divided by 9 minus 3, right, the amount that I've gotten rid of right there, 3, like so, okay? So this is equivalent to 9 factorial divided by 6 factorial, which would have given us the same answer what we have right there, okay? So I can go on to say that the permutations of different objects can always be expressed as the following. Okay, and so it says the number of permutations of n distinct objects. So, for instance, the question I had before had nine distinct objects taken at r at a time. So I was only going to take three of them, and so that's why it was nine minus three, or as you see right here, we had six. Okay, so we're going to mess around with this um, with a couple of examples and uh, see what we come up with. So example two here says that we have uh, eight students and they're competing in a 100 meter race. How many ways can the students finish first, second, or third? Well. What are the different possibilities? Well, we have 8 factorial, right? And then we only care about the first three, so we're going to go 8 minus 3 factorial, which leaves us with 8 factorial, all divided by 5 factorial. And of course, you could put this into your calculator as 8 times 7 times 6 and so on, and then divided by 5 and so on. Or likely you have that button that you can press, and you'll just end up getting 336 different ways that that race could be finished where there were three different people coming in first, second, and third, okay, and in three different orders. All right, finally we have example three. Example three says solve each equation for n or r. So notice that in a we're going to look for n, and in b we're going to look for r. Before we get too into it, I want to remind you about the uh, formula that we had on the previous page, and that said that um, we have n factorial divided by n minus r factorial, okay? And let me remind you what this is. Um, the number of permutations um, is represented by n distinct objects and it's taken at r at a time like so. So in this case right here, this np2 is equal to 56, um, we can substitute in such that we have 56 is equal to my n factorial is just going to be n because we don't have value for n, and then we're going to have n minus r, r is 2 in this case. Okay. Now I want you to think about what this n factorial really represents right here. If I was to give you 4 factorial, that would mean 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But because I just have a variable right there, uh, reference what that would look like. So maybe I'll just write that 4 factorial. It would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So because I have n factorial there, I'm simply just going to write down the first number that I have. So with 4 factorial, I'd write down 4. With n factorial, I'm going to write down n. Okay, and then what happens? Well, I get 1 smaller. So I'm going to write n minus 1. And then what happens? I get 2 smaller, n minus 2, and so on. Okay. Well, what if I was to do this with n minus 2 factorial? Well, the first term again would just be n minus 2. And then you'd have 1 smaller than that, n minus 3, and so on, like that. Okay. Well, if we take a look right here, what you can see is that these terms are going to end up canceling out. n minus 2 and n minus 2 are going to cancel. This would be n minus 3 right there. It'd cancel with this n minus 3, and so on. These would cancel, right? Well, what am I left with? The only things that you're left with right here is you're left with n and an n minus 1 is equal to 56. And this turns into being a quadratic. It's back, more quadratics. And if we move everything to one side of the equation, we're then given the ability where we can go and factor this. What numbers multiply to give you negative 56 that have a sum of negative 1? They are, of course, negative 8 and a positive 7, which would give you n is equal to 8 and n is equal to negative 7. Okay. Well, if you remember what we know about n, we know that n must be a um, number that is, let's go and take a look, I'll show you where I find it, right here. We know that n must be greater than or equal to r, and in this case, we would have found out that negative 2 is not greater than or equal to r, so we can go and we can reject this answer based on that principle. Okay. Let's go and take a look at the, uh, the last one here, b. So b, um, it's kind of just the opposite. We know what n is this time, so we have 5 factorial. Okay, so that's 5 times 4 and so on. And then we'd have 5 minus r right here. Okay. So a little bit different in the fact that um, we can go and figure out what 5 factorial is. So that's 5 times 4, which is 20. 20 times, uh, we'd have 3 is 60. 60 times 2 is 120. So this is 20 is equal to 120 all over 5 minus r factorial, like so. 
Okay. So what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to isolate for 5 minus r factorial. So what I can do is I can cross multiply these such that I get 5 minus r factorial is equal to 6. Okay. Now here's one thing I want you to consider what we know about factorials. Okay. So I know that 3 factorial, so maybe I'll just get you to write this as a little note. We know 3 factorial is equal to 6. So somehow we have to turn this into being a 3. So we know that we can use this information right here that 5 minus r must be equal to 3. So what is r going to be? Well, if I move the r to this side and subtract 3, I have 5 minus 3 is equal to r, or r is equal to 2. Okay? So that was um, a couple of examples on this page where we are looking at uh, how we could use these uh, factorials um, using the equation that we have for the permutations of different objects. And uh, that concludes this uh, short lesson. Thank you very much.